What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Please, well, pl- at okay. Welcome to the Police Notes Sargasm Podcast. I'm joined here today with Fabio P96, and today we're going to be talking about Twitch and the pros, cons, and the amazing community that it is. Because in this community, no matter where who you are, where you are, they will love you, totally love you. Twitch is amazing. All right, so Fabio, why don't you kick it off with explaining what exactly is Twitch compared? And try to explain it as if you're talking to someone who's never, ever heard of Twitch, doesn't ever really play video games. Maybe have it someone from, like, Harvard or something. Okay. Um, Shots fired. Shots fired. (laughs) So, Twitch is a website to start it off. It's twitch.tv. Twitch is a streaming site, which basically streaming is what we're doing now, but live. So... You're on camera and people can see you like right then and there. It's it's actual like people watching you all the time pretty much. But um, it's a live streaming uh, website where you play games um, or gaming related stuff, anything, because now they've opened up the barriers to creative gaming type deals, coding and like art and stuff. So you can do anything and also music, I think. Yeah, so you, music can, too. you can do You know all that stuff. Uh, you can do it live. And basically, uh, you build an audience and a community in the website. And um, by doing so, you it can be a hobby, it can be a career if you're uh, going down that, ra- that route. But um, that takes a lot more dedication and hard work. A lot of risks, but um, it, it is possible. So, yeah, exactly. It's, my, my analogy is always, is imagine watching your favorite TV show, but live. And sometimes you could even talk to the host. That was always my favorite one. But yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much exactly it. So Twitch is a streaming service. And the whole amazing part of it is yes, yes, trying to build your audience is like just insane. Like some people can build it like a thousand followers a month, aka Jenner. Or, you know, some of us just build really slowly and have, you know, peaks, aka you and me. Um And yeah, it is dangerous. Like there's a lot of things I go into that are just you're really worried because it's not something that you can go into thinking you have a secure plan to be able to at least you know live off of it or make something from it because from my understanding you only make money from it after you get partnered you get money from Twitch from the second commercial say you run in your streams well the way people make there there are many ways to make if we're just strictly speaking money, there are many ways you can make money through Twitch. Um, well, you don't need to be partnered. Well, what do you mean? No, I'm saying like from Twitch itself because then I was going to get to oh. donations and all that. And so. Okay, well, to get paid from Twitch, um, things have changed throughout the years because originally the way it started out with was um, you needed to get some certain amount of viewership, which was like around in the hundreds up there. And then you got your advertising ability. You could put ads on your channel. And um, before, that was when you were being acknowledged as a really good streamer and you were able to put ads to generate some income for yourself. Um, Before, those two weren't tied with subscriptions. Nowadays, um, subscriptions gets you ads. So once you hit that like magic number of like 100 to 500 range, you get your sub button and then you get ads and um, the sub button. Before, you had to have gotten ads first and then you got sub. So... Hundreds range was the advertisement side, and then once you got into like above the hundreds, up into the thousands, then you got your sub button, which then Twitch would actually pay you per subscriber. Right, and now it's now it's more of like the ads is a very small amount um, that streamers ads, generate. Ads, yeah, ads aren't really what um, pay for a streamer's day to day. Some people do use ads, but some people are generally against ads um you you see everything throughout twitch you see people being like um i i've seen many models where it's just like um every hour or so i'm gonna go grab a drink and i'm gonna run an ad so you guys just watch the ad i've also seen people who never play ads they they detest it they're like oh, we don't like ads we don't want to put you guys through that we're just gonna sit down here and chill for like odd some hours if i need to go do something you can watch my chair and that's where like many things like chair hype and things come into place right and then i've also yeah and i've also seen instances where it's like um 
I'm gonna leave my stream on 24 seven and this this amount of time I will be um, streaming no ads and then they'll rebroadcut rebroadcast their last stream and that will have tons of ads basically asking the people to be like hey if you actually want to support me leave your like computer some tab open with me going through ads and that helps me out and there, there's gotcha. like loads of ways I've seen it um, but nowadays uh, that that last one I talked about where people would rebroadcast their last stream is actually becoming a feature in Twitch there um, it's in I think it's either in alpha or beta right now their playlist software where you can right. play through your previous streams. I think it's only available to some uh, subbed Twitch streamers. Yeah, so see, uh, I was watching um, OMG's Firefox and she was talking about that and then I immediately went to my own Twitch and was trying to find it and could not find hide or hair of it and I was like, yeah. what is this playlist thing? So, yeah, so <laughs> Twitch is a possible career path but any Twitch streamer has a YouTube channel and that's a whole nother can of well, worms. Yeah. Like, whew, YouTube. It's YouTube. It's literally something that I'm too afraid to go into because it is so big. So anyways, every Twitch streamer usually has a YouTube channel, and that is also another way of their income. They also get income from the sub button. If you don't know what that is, people pay $4.99 a month to get special um, access with the streamer. So whether it be a TeamSpeak code or um, some special emotes that only they can use in all chats or whatever the streamer decides and then also donations are a big thing and if you watch any big big streamer like Tom, OMG's Firefox, Jericho, um, who was the, there's a streamer I was watching last night there's, a, there's um, tons of streamers the Jackass like, like there's so many big big streamers that just generate thousands upon thousands of viewers per stream if you watch their donation alert, it's non-stop. Not even kidding. It's just boom, boom, boom. To the point where the streamers can't even read all the all the donations. And if you think about that, if they get ten dollars an hour through donations, let's just put that in a minimum. They put ten dollars a bit an hour, they stream eight hours a day, that's eighty bucks just through donations a day. That's enough food for a day. I mean, that's, you know, kind of way down low, but um, it's kind of exaggerating. But you get my point. It's just like, holy shit, once you make it, it's just nonstop. Literally the entire time. And it's not a bad thing either. I mean, streaming takes a lot out of you, and you requires a lot of money. Probably it's just like... I'm gonna roast this guy right now. <laughs> yeah. I I mean, uh, the way I I I that's true. Like there are big streamers. Like there are people in the thousands and like ten thousands that do generate uh, tons of donations and stuff like that. But generally, what I see, um, like I'm 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 looking at like the biggest streamer like in all of Twitch would be Lyric. Um, Lyric is the biggest streamer, averaging like anywhere from like. 20 to 30,000 viewers every single stream and um yeah they, they these like there's like tons of streamers who get donations all the time but generally a lot of the times it's it's getting to the point where it's like that donation system is becoming the interaction because once you have those 20 to 30,000 even even if you have only a thousand viewer viewers which to us might seem like a lot but to some like big name streamers they'd be like a thousand is kind of the entry point of what is professionally great, I would say. Hmm. And then it's it's sort of along the lines of, I can't pay attention to, like, people try to find ways to still stay interactive with chat even when they're in those insane numbers. Yeah. Along the lines of, okay, I'll like, some streamers will always, they'll have no restrictions to their chat, maybe just slow mode, and that restricts how often you can chat. So, like, you can t chat one big message, and then you have to wait 30 seconds until you can type in chat again. Basically, Which is annoying as hell. Not really, if you think about it. Because, I mean, everyone has their own preference, and I, I can understand why people are like, I want to keep chatting with you. The thing is, though, is that slow mode's there for a reason, and so is subscriber mode, and so is every mode. And right, like, of course. Like, slow mode's there in the sense of, like, they have ten, four or 5,000 people, even a 1,000, and, like, Cause, cause it varies as well. Like, 
I, I know people who have insane chats with slow mode on who only average like 200 viewers. And if you go to someone who has a thousand viewers, you can keep up with that chat. You can keep right. up with the thousand viewer, but the 200 viewer person, they just have such a like interactive community that everyone's talking nonstop, which is when you need to implement stuff like that. Because at that point, it's just a wall of nothingness to the streamer because they can't get anything out of it. And if they start to pay attention to it, other people will keep trying to get the streamer's attention, which then donations become a sense of, okay, I'll donate a dollar, read my message. Right. And I, I don't know, like chat and donation, I feel like are very linked. And don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see donations as a way of actually, it's a big part of like how to support a streamer, but I don't think it's the main way that most streamers see it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, speaking of community, let's get into that a little bit. <sighs> Boy. The Twitch community, it is one amazing yet scary thing. Like, okay, don't get me wrong. There are some amazing people in the Twitch community, and I've met my best friends through Twitch. And, um, oh, yeah, you can't see my gestures. <laughs> nope. That's right, because OBS is trolling. Um, but um, there's... But the biggest, I think the biggest problem is, is that it is flooded with just the most immature people. Now, not to be mean or anything, but if you, you'll notice that when you go into a Twitch chat, you have people that have great relationships, you know, the mods are really good friends with the streamer and whatnot, but then you have these people who just say the most random stuff, and you're like, why is that, why did you even think of saying that because that's not going to get you anything it's just going to get you timed out and then ignored and, and i'm kind of talking about the girl streamers when someone comes into girl streams like show oh. me your boobs it's just like well what i i mean that, that's an example there's like a million other scenarios y yeah they i don't know a lot of community like like a, it's just like the word itself a community is based on like around something basically so a community involves to follow something or like have just a general like population of people just gathered around like some central idea right so basically there's like there's so many different types of communities like i and there's so many different types of streamers which involve those communities like there's the trolling community which is like the uh, not necessarily because I think you just going into a female streamers and being like, take your top off or like show us your tits or something like that is just, that's not being a troll. I, you could call it that, but it's more along the lines of being just one, a dick. a dick and being disrespectful. And like, there's so like, that's not something you should say. Like, I, I, like, I, I personally, this is my opinion where it's like, don't hit on a streamer basically yeah. is what I would say. Um, Mainly one, because if you're going into the stream just thinking, I'm going to hit on this person, I don't think you're going to be successful. Because more than likely, just be even this shouldn't be a thing, but it's normal that this person has already been hit on like 50 times that day of people in their chat. Like it could be a guy or a girl. And like it doesn't, it doesn't usually work that way. I mean, even I, I wouldn't see it happening ever. I don't. I don't know of scenarios of people going in a chat then starting to date, except for one, but this, the reason it happened was because both of them were streamers and it worked out that way. Right, in and that I know case, exactly what we're talking about here. <laughs> no, like I know two, like I know two okay. scenarios, I guess, because you reminded me of them. Uh, yeah. I wasn't thinking about that, but um, basically along the lines of, um, they, they, they just interconnected with like, through communities basically just like yeah. i am a streamer uh i found you i was in your chat just started talking and then you just start getting involved with other people and then that's how that works but back to the actual community side of thing there's the trolling community which are the people who i see that as like 4chan and reddit and like people who just try and go to troll people like the shoe on head or like door and like all that kind of stuff that i see is as trolling because they're not actually ruining anything they might ruin your chat experience, but they're not actually like deliberately like assaulting you. Right. Like, 
there are those people who are like, you're this, that, that. That I see as the haters, just complete haters. They're not even a part of the troll community. Like, they're, they're, for me, there are two distinct things. There are haters and trolling people. Trolling's, like, not good fun. Like, they can be annoying and everything. But these, like, trolls are, you just time them out. They'll go away. And then yeah. there's the haters who constantly persist on coming back, trying to in, instigate you so many different things. That I see as, in, for me at least, if people come in with that men mentality into my stream, they're instantly banned. See, there, because there's, I'm not, an, there's an interesting, um, really interesting thing about that. So I, I was going to put in, so yeah, there's the people who like, you know, just like that, just like you said, that come in and hate a lot. And what's funny about that is I learned through a couple of different things, um, through personal experience and through my psych class, that they have, for some reason, a connection with you, and they're just jealous. They're not mad at you, per se. The ones who keep coming back. Not the ones that just come in, see you, hate you, come back a couple times, hate you again, and then leave. The ones who keep coming back, like, over and over and over again. Those ones are actually jealous of you for some odd reason, because you remind them of something in their life that they was taken away from them or maybe someone that hurt them and you remind me of them of that person that just could be jealousy yeah so like just said jealousy it's just it's weird and i've kind of had that in my chat once and so when i early on when i first first started streaming um i had no idea what i was getting myself into like I had, I had just watched Twitch a couple of times. I was watching a CS:GO streamer called I'm Cody, and I was like, "This seems fun." I've been doing YouTube for a few months now. I can do this, you know. I can get in front of a camera. Okay, cool. Boy, was I wrong. Um, it's no. Go ahead, you. Okay, so I go in and I get this this one kid, and I had no idea how old, old he was because I couldn't gauge his age through how he acted on through an internet chat service like it's twitch chat i had no idea so he acted completely normal at first and then he i think okay so then i mod him because he's always in there always helpful so i was like okay i'll mod him and then as soon as he got that little sword boy did this kid go crazy I have power! He would get into arguments with everybody. It's like, I will time you out. As if, like, him being mod, like, he's immune to everything. So, he gets into arguments, so I can say arguments with people, and I have to calm him down. I'm like, dude, what the hell is going on with you? And then, finally, I take away his mod chip and ban him. Like, he got that bad. I just banned him. Like, you're gone. I'm like, listen to me. You offended my friends. You offended my chat. On no instance did they start it. I saw you start it, so don't lie to me again. Go away, calm down, and come back to me, and then we'll talk. So he comes back and starts pinning shit on other people again. So he does the typical 12 year old thing where he tries, not me, not my fault, not my fault. Keeps coming back and does that. It was just weird. It was like, kid, if you don't like this so much, why do you keep coming back? There are thousands of other streamers out there. I'm nothing special. Why me? And then that's where my, my hypothesis came up with. I think they're jealous of something. They have this connection, but they... Like, they have a connection with the streamer, but they just can't accept the streamer for... Or the situation. They have to have it their way. Or they can't... You know, it's <clears> a jealousy <throat> thing, so... Uh, weird. Well, I guess you're just... I don't know. Like, I, 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 I'm sorry if I should know this, but, like, when did you start streaming? Uh, back in January. Like around then, because I was building my so, PC back then. So, about a year. Yeah. Okay, so how long have you been in the Twitch community, though? Like, how long have you been on Twitch? So, I found Twitch when I first moved to California, so around August or September of 2014. That's okay. when like, that's when I discovered it, but I didn't really watch it consistently, cause I was watching one person. I was watching Tom, or sorry, two people, Tom and I'm Cody. But I wasn't really watching it that much. Because, I okay, I found I'm Cody through a, one of his videos. I was just on YouTube after I uploaded the video. And it was saying, um, oh, wait, back up. I, okay, I used to stream sporadically through the PS4. But I had no right. idea what Twitch was. Because I would watch it through the broadcasting. No idea what Twitch was. I didn't even know that I was related to Twitch. 
Okay. So I was just broadcasting through PS4 when like something would drop, but never really did it consistent. Then I found out what Twitch really was through I'm Cody because I watched his getting swatted video and I was like, oh man, I feel really bad for him. So I went and checked him out, gave him support, you know, donated, subscribed, whatnot. And then I got a computer, tried streaming, the computer sucked, and then I built this computer and started streaming. That's my story. <laughs> okay, um, I guess, I don't know, like, I guess I've been around Twitch a little bit longer than you have, probably like maybe six months earlier than you, probably, because I, I, I've Makes been here, it's almost three years, which blows me away, but, um, uh, what is it? Uh, basically, I, I guess I'm, I, I don't know, did you do any research going into Twitch? No. Or did you just wing it? I winged it. Okay, I, I kind of, I kind of winged it. But I looked up things because I didn't, I like, I asked people uh, what would, like, I kind of noticed things and, like, picked up on, like, hints. But basically, um, when I first got into Twitch, I didn't mod anyone. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't. Like, I don't know how, how long that person had been there that you modded, but, like, uh, my modding process. Two, eh. like, no, no, um, a few. Like, it was, like, a month into it, and I modded it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> to to be like I might just be a like a, a like a stick-headed like asshole or something I don't know but to to become one of my mods is very hard, very very hard. Yeah, I know it's because I'm not one. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> generally it's be no it's but um mainly right now um I don't like the way I see it mods are supposed to be like. Kind of not. I wouldn't say police, but they're there in, to like keep control and to incite um, conversation and keep the chat alive. That's kind of my like. That's what mods should do. Um, right now, um, I kind of have only like two mods that are like my mods. Like I have friends who are modded and everything uh, who I've known for quite a while. And um, basically, it's along the lines of. I have two mods right now who are usually there. One of them is my main mod. I he is my main mod. He's helped me out. He's been there for a long, long time. Right. I think it's 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 almost been a year since he's been modded. So this person has helped me with a lot of things. But my modding process is difficult. I would say um, it's Home pretty screen. much um, what would it be? Uh, you have to fill out an application. And then you have to get into a Skype call with me. And then I ask you different questions, basically just so I can get the feel for who you are. And then I ask the really hard hitting question, um, can you take someone bitching at you through chat? Because regardless of who you are, you have, like even th for Twitch, you have to be able to take shit yeah. and be able to take it and not give any reaction. If a mod gives any reaction to anything, to like them being like you're this you're that you're that the only thing they should have to do is time out if you say anything back you're unmodded in my book you right. should never say anything back you should just time out there should be no communication after someone's been insulting them like it shouldn't be that you should not have to say anything i have given like the power thing that they said is true they a mod does get power I give my mods power because I went through that insanely difficult process of you becoming a mod. I'm giving you power. If you show any sign of you like taking advantage of your power or any any way of like being like um like if not being in the right order of things of how I set it out cuz like some some mods don't have to do this. Some chats don't mods don't have to do anything. They just have to be there and just you be like, hey, uh, ban that person, and then they they just have to do that. Um, so it's different in every chat scenario, but for me, it's more along the lines of, you do what I expect you to do. If you do that, you can do whatever you want. Right. Just don't don't go and do anything. The second they do, they're unmodded. They're not banned, but it's along the lines of, hey, because all a mod is is a very tight person in the community, a very dedicated viewer who wants to help out the community. The only thing, like, I always tell people before they apply for mod is like, being a mod sucks. I'm not gonna lie to you. It sucks, you, you have responsibilities, you have things to do, 
um, you have to generally be here. Like yeah. I can understand if you're gone a week because you're doing something or like you have something going on. I can understand that, that's life. I have those kind of things as well. But if you're never there, if you're gone for three months, don't expect to be mod coming back. Unless you're yeah. like, I was gone. Like we went through, you'd have to explain it to me. There needs to be reasons for things that you can't just be, I drop off the face of the earth and be like, I'm back. Yeah, it can't I, be I have that same thing. I'm like, if you're going to disappear for a while, just tell me beforehand. Yeah. Because otherwise, because like, I'm going to unmod you because it's just, and, that's the way it works. And my modding, yeah. my modding process definitely evolved with experience because I would mod someone once I felt like I kind of knew them, but then I didn't realize unmodding people could be so hard. So that's why now I only mod people every so often due to other mods dropping out. Other mods just not mods not showing up anymore. It's just like that thing I have. It's like I have yeah. three main mods: Music Baby, uh, Pixie Dreams, and Sniper Pro, and they each kind of have their own role, which is funny. Music Baby is kind of like the I want to say the person with the giant sword. Like she will fuck up your day really the quick. Bad cow. Yeah, Sniper Pro is the support. Like, Music Baby support, too. Like, she'll... She talks with chat. She interviews with, with chat. Great, you know, great mod. I mean, Sniper Pro, same thing. It's just usually music the ones, like, timing out everybody. Like, it, 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 it's hilarious what some people will say one thing, and boom! Like, I don't even see it yet until the person's timed out. Sniper, like, he knows everything. He's great with computers, great with, like, just script errors, stuff like that. Like, whenever someone has a PC problem, he's there. He's also plays video games with me, so he's kind of like that. Yeah. The you know the community's mod. Then Pixie Dreams is kind of in the background, just chilling, and then she will completely slap you on your ass if you say something wrong, which is hilarious because I don't know what is saying something wrong to for them than it is for me because you can't say something to me and offend me, but you can say yeah almost little to nothing to them and then <laughs> you're gone. So I kind of yeah. leave my mods as a separate entity in a sense, because there's my stream, and I'm entertaining, and I'm reading chat. The mods kind of decide, they have a set of rules that I sent them, like, these are the rules to follow, don't fire back at, my number one rule, or sort of something like that, is never fire back at someone like you, like, never fire back at a troll. You can, basically they have three tries, try to calm them down, if they fire back at you again, try to calm, give them a warning. If they fire back at you again, time them out. Like, I have this system of just, like, third time strike, in a sense, because it just feels like some people may just not get it at first, like, oh shit, I'm doing something wrong here, and then I'm like, alright, you're timed out. But then I like to have yeah. that separate entity of mod chip, because it's like, people are like, okay, I didn't necessarily offend the streamer, so I don't feel bad. Like, they don't, okay, I didn't offend the streamer, I just offended the mod, he, no one's mad. Because other people have it stored for like the mods are the, are protecting the streamer, especially with like not to be that person, but with female streamers, that's what a mod kind of feels like. Especially when I've been a mod in a female stream, it's like, okay, I'm protecting her because I know exactly what's coming, and uh. I don't want that for my stream at least. I mean, yeah, different people, different mods, whatever. But I just that's the way I got it. I felt when in the stream with a female with a female streamer. It's, that's what was going on. But I, I have different. Wait, no. Oh, I was just gonna say, like when you're going into Twitch and trying to get like get a mod, you really want somebody that's just what's it? What's it called? Like you want you want somebody that's like your friend that, and that's yeah, that... mature. Like never mod anybody that's okay. Never mod anybody that's less mature than you or as mature as you. Like, I think that's a, a general rule. Try, like, kind of, I mean, if you can, sometimes you can't, but. I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's about maturity. I mean, it is a little bit, but, like, I, 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 there are less mature mods, but as long as they follow the rules. Like, they don't have to be mature in chat. They can be, like, that's, that's one thing, like, again, like, I can't compare my stream to yours because we're two different types of streamers. Right. Um, but something, uh, what was it you said? Uh, something about uh, a female streamer, like they're trying to protect them. My view of like a mod isn't a protector. It's, it shouldn't be that. Because if that's what they're doing, 
it's going to get... I feel like a streamer should get shit on. As bad as that might sound, um, I feel like a streamer should have to endure um, being, like, hated on. Because being anything in content creation such as Twitch or YouTube, you need thick skin. If you don't, you're yeah. going to fail. No, it doesn't I, matter. I, I actually agree with that. Um, you really need to... Okay, yeah, see, like, I was just thinking, you know, trying to mod like people they after... Like, like a, a female streamer shouldn't have to be ridiculed in that way, but it's going to happen, so you need thick skin. Right, I was just thinking, they would have the mods there so that she can... can she could deal with it the way she wants to. Because yeah. some people, you know, it takes more time to deal with that kind of stuff. Like, you know, it takes time to be able to deal with, like, raids and stuff like that. I so said, when I had my first 4chan raid, I wasn't, I wasn't even... I was freaked out, don't get me wrong, but I didn't, like, react at all. Which is probably the best thing I could have done, thank God. Um, but... Like, other people, it takes time to even just learn to do that. Because some people might come in, be coming into the Twitch community just like, la, 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 la. Oh, what a beautiful community! Oh, God! Like, slapped in the face with, with a giant Hitler dick or whatever. You know, they type in chat with their... Yeah. ...sarcastic art. Um, like, what was it? Uh, Chicken dick or whatever that thing is? Butt uh, dick? Oh, dick butt. Dick butt, there it is. That... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we all love that uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. It's... I... Mm, I don't know. It might just be me, but I feel like... Any streamer should be... Like, if you're a big streamer and you've gotten it to the point where you're at, like, really big, and you haven't dealt with anything like that, I feel like you're going to crash and burn. Like, sure. you Like, you can put up protective measures you could have an army of mods like a hundred mods basically when you get to that point and you'd be like i'm never going to see anything bad the thing is though with more growth you might need more mods and if you don't scale that properly you're going to see a comment you're going to see something you're not going to like and, and that not even if you if you take that hard because it's your first time getting that then you're, you're ar you've already made it you're going, your your thought process could go along the lines of, has anyone else said that? I've been doing this for, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I see it as, get shit on in the beginning. If you don't have thick skin, you better grow it, or you're not going to make it. Right. But at this, like, ugh, like, that's for hate, not for trolling. Like, I said this in the beginning, trolling is not hating. Because com there are communities built around making fun of trollers like so, a great example like i don't not he's i don't think something i've learned throughout twitch is like if you say a, a big twitch streamer you know of someone else has never heard of that person. right okay someone someone i know as ezekiel the third he trolls trolls not in the sense of oh that's stupid or anything he's like well sort of he's like along the lines of um a troll comes in chats like a bunch of trolls come into chat saying something and then he has mods who get rid of the haters. For trolls, everyone steps back and watches because that's a part of his thing. His thing is to make fun of trolls. His thing is to be like, you call that trolling? You're a disgrace to the trolling. He makes everything about it. Like, he puts <laughs> on a show about, like, you call that troll. That's not trolling. You get in that corner and think of something better. Like, he goes through that route. Wow, I actually many, like that. Yeah. There are many different ways of dealing with trolls, and like, I feel like trolls are just some little spice up in a chat. And if trolling turns into hating, that's something else. Like, there are many different, there's, there's like a very thin, fine line between trolling and hating. One is very playful, one can be just spice in a chat. The other can be very bitter and horrible. And then that should be gone. That yeah. should be dealt with mods. And so, that's... Yeah, no, I, and we there's different communities, and for each community, there's a different style to the way they are. I mean, you've got so many amazing communities out there, like, just style of Twitch streaming. You have the overly excessive on chat people who just have to read every line. 
<clears throat> me and Jenner, and you. And then there's people who read chat, but only when they have a break in the game. So they're really, really heavily invested in on their content. So it's like, are you, and then there's people that are kind of both a little bit, like a little invested in chat, a little invested in game, a little invested in who they're talking to and team speak or whatever. So it's like a mixture. Yeah. It, it, it's I, all, it's all preference. And I, it, I'm literally that could be a different podcast speaking about all the different types of streamers because like there's so many different types. So yeah, there, it's just like, uh, I want to, I want to, I was wanting to get some other people in on here, but I think we're going to have to do it next week. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to say, since we talked about so much neg- negativity on Twitch, we should probably bring the viewers to something a little more positive because we've only <laughs> been bashing things in Twitch. Um, anyway, so something more positive. How stream... Okay, so I was watching the Jackass um, podcast last night. And not gonna, you know, not gonna lie. I was taking some notes on things to talk about because they were bringing up a lot of really good points. And if you guys want to watch um, a really great podcast, uh, it's the Jackass podcast. I'll leave the Twitch link in the description below. I started watching it last night. Probably gonna continue every night. Um, anyways, um, one thing that they mentioned and that I had never really thought of is the way streamers affect the viewers and like maybe the complete stranger is quite fascinating if you think about it how many times has someone come into your stream and said dude i was having such a bad day but you made it so much better and how did you think how authentic did you think that was like just try to think of an example um it uh I, I don't know how it's, I would approach that because for me, it's like, I feel like that's what a lot of streamers are there for. It's to brighten people's day. Not only to entertain, like, you're I guess you're there to entertain and you're there to give people, like, a, like a reason to be there. Um, but I doing so, I feel like any type of entertainer on any platform, YouTube, TV, anything, they could be like, you've brightened my day. The difference with Twitch for me is... Um, the people you're talking about how like they love it when people bring they're like you've brightened my day right right um i see that in two different lights because i can't see that in one like just like the world's not black and white it's it's a shade of gray and in the sense of half <laughs> shades gray well that's yeah, it, completely that. that all right <laughs> but basically <laughs> it's along the lines of someone who comes into my chat and being like i had like to one degree, it's like, I had a really shitty day, right? Right. And then I would respond being like, dude, that sucks, man. Hang around, chill out here. We'll have loads of fun. Just joke around and everything, right? That's what I'm there for. If they bring it one step above, they, at least for me, they get timed out. If they're like, I've had a really shitty day. Um, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. This happened. Like some, someone died, all this stuff they get timed out for me. And it's not in the sense of me being like, I don't care or anything along the li- along those lines because my mods usually know to like either get rid of that or I will get rid of it because sometimes they see the message of a mod did it. Right. Most of the times I do it. So they're like, why was I timed out? I will do it most of the time because I, and then I follow up with being, dude, I understand you're going through a bunch of stuff right now don't put it in chat because it brings a sense of negativity and we're going back to negative sorry but like it's no it, a it lot makes of- it makes sense because yeah that's the thing like every every almost every time i stream there's always someone that says you know like they're really extremely happy to see my stream and i've had it where people just brought in all this drama and sadness in the stream and they're like oh my god and the best way to approach is like look dude i get it DM me later off stream. Don't That's what bring I everyone else down. Like, just say you've had a bad day. Sit back, relax. We'll make it better. If you need someone talking about it, you know, if one of the mods won't mind talking to you, I won't mind talking to you, you know, on the side. And then there's people like who are just like, I'm just like, holy shit, you're that into this stream. Like, people just will not, like, they apologize for being late. Or from missing a stream. And oh, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm just glad you're here. Like, <laughs> do you like, see I that think... little number on the bottom right? 
I, you're one of those, and I'm happy. I, I, I feel like it's along the lines of nowadays it's turning into Twitch and YouTube are becoming... Well, we're just talking about Twitch. So Twitch is mainly a lot of people's entertainment value. That's what it is for me. Yeah. I've neg- I, I'll openly admit it. I've neglected so many different types of media. Like, I don't pay attention to music. I don't know what the most latest song is. I don't know what movies are in theaters, except for Star Wars. Oh, my God, I'm going to watch that. But um, <laughs> yes. uh, I, and, um, I don't know any TV shows. I don't know anything. People, like, when I go to my college classes, everyone's talking about something, 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 and I'm just there like, Cool. <laughs> I, I I genuinely don't know anything that's going on out there, and like I know a couple things just because it's on the internet. But like, if it's not on Twitch ads, if it's not on YouTube's ads, if it's not on Reddit, right. I don't know about it. I it it doesn't pass by me because it's just my entertainment. Like, I feel like I'm so pulled into it that I'm a part of the community that. It, it drowns everything out. It, what's funny is um, I'll get ragged on in my chat because I haven't heard of something or whatnot. Like the hurricane in Mexico. I didn't know about it until someone mentioned it in chat because I'm the same way. That's it's just, there are it's funny you say that, but I learned about that from a stream. <laughs> so It's like we could have our own news stream so we don't have to leave the site. But yeah, no, I, I, actually, I actually do that. I will not stream, but, like, I watch news from YouTube. I don't watch news on TV. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I watch, like, you know, Philly Franco and Drama Alert just to fill me in. Yeah, there's so many types of things, like... Um, but anyways, it's... What was I going to say? Um, yeah, I get, like, I only watch YouTube, Twitch, Rainier Land, and Netflix now. Like, Netflix, just because they had, they had Blacklist... And now they have NCIS, I figured out, so I'm very happy about that. Um, I used to be so into that show, so I'm getting back into it. But point is, is yeah, like, I will literally, if there's nothing on my subscription list, if no one is live, I'll just go to bed. Because I'll yeah. be like, well, there's nothing to watch. Nothing that I'm interested in watching. And people are like, talking about, like, these TV shows. And, and I'm just like, I have zero interest in all that. Because if you think about it, what's more fun than watching TV? watching TV and being able to interact with everyone else watching and the people in the show. Well, not only that, but Hands up in streaming... Yes. High five? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing along with, like, TV is weekly. And, like, some YouTube is weekly. Some... not I don't know any Twitch that's weekly. But some YouTube is weekly. Most Twitch is every day or every other day. And, like, it's continuous content. You can't, like, you follow, like, f- that's like 10 streamers. You will have entertainment throughout the day if you schedule that correctly. Yeah. Like, you will have something to do for 24 hours if you do that right. Yeah, that's so, actually really true, yeah. You, you will like, have. Maybe more. You wouldn't have enough time to watch everyone. Like, I know some streamers that you could follow three of them and you would you'd overlap like there's there's insane amounts of stuff so i feel like because we're in the digital age of where everyone's like i need this now 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 we're switching from general tv which takes like tons of time to edit to like play your role and like it's becoming less and less of a thing because people are like well, I want something to enjoy now, and I want some... So they have to follow... Like, for instance, my sister is loves TV. No, no such thing as Twitch or YouTube. Right. Only TV. She's following, like, more than 60 shows. And, like, some of them aren't... Like, all of them are, like, on one season. And there's, like... And she's, like, I have nothing to watch now. I need to re-watch what I watched before. And I'm just, like, get into YouTube. Get into Twitch. You will we'll have everything to watch. And she's, like, no because she doesn't think that way and i'm just like well, all right it's <laughs> no, your own fault you're missing out on so much youtube there's like literally any type of person any type of thing you're into someone else is into it you just gotta find them on youtube yeah. if you're into like for in, like if you're into magic the gathering or something youtube twitch and like everything that if you're into tutorials for makeup if you're like someone who likes makeup look that up on youtube even twitch you will find it i guarantee it 
It will be a VOD somewhere or they will be live streaming things of Wayne Main. Might not be the exact same thing for Twitch because it's gaming. You might get like cosplay type thing, but that's another thing that might introduce you to something else. There's so many things on the internet that you can find. So it's just insane. Totally not looking like, up makeup tutorial on Twitch. Oh I, my god, you're kidding. I'm telling you, dude, like everything is on Twitch has like om literally almost everything. Um, it might not be exactly what you're looking for, but it's got it in some way, shape, or form connected. Well, there's so many different... Yeah. So, I don't know. We've um, gotten really off topic, because yeah, we started we... with... Yeah, um... Well, we were talking about good things about Twitch. Yes. <laughs> well, that's the beautiful thing about the podcast, is you can get off topic with not care, I think, well, right? Is that how podcasts work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, I mean... Yeah, so if you're, like, new to Twitch and you've still survived through the 45 minutes that we've been rambling on about things, Twitch is not really comparable to anything. Okay, and what I mean by that is Twitch is its own unique source of entertainment. I, th I think I could compare it to something. I always compare it to TV, but it's never the same. Mm -hmm. No. I I'd compare it to this. I'd compare it to you doing stand-up improv. Because everything is on the fly. But Nothing is scripted. That's that's the same thing with the TV and talking to the people watching. What I'm saying is No, like, but that's the thing. Like, like okay, yeah. stand-up imp improv, you can talk to the crowd. You can talk to them. Like, uh, yeah. most like comedians or anything who do stand-up improv, they will talk, interact with the crowd. That's why I'm saying I'm comparing it to that. You might not be broadcasting to thousands of people. You might be talking to a, a room full of people, though. And then... That's I would compare it to that. Oh yeah, that's, actually I didn't really think about the whole talking to the crowd. Yeah, so you, I always compare it to TVB. Yeah, it's like stand-up improv, and it, it is true. The funnier, the better. The more, the better you. Oh, okay. To be honest, the more you overreact in stream, the better. Because well, okay. In my personal opinion, if you can overreact correctly. Like, in a good way, like, you die and you just go, fuck, you know, like, stuff like that. Just make it funny in the way that you would see something funny. Then well, other people will enjoy that. Because I'm like, don't that, go, don't try to, like, mirror some other person's reaction to when they get killed no. or something like that. Think about, if you're watching, the way I do it is, I think about someone, okay, right, if I was watching a stream, what would be the funniest scenario if so, this, like, you know, if I went down in zombies, if a nuke went down, you know, or if I got down one and there's a nuke on, like, I'll think about all the different scenarios, right? And I'll think about how I would want someone to react because it would be the funniest way for me. Dash in a little personality of my own, dash in a little sarcasm, you know, stir them up, and boom, there's my Twitch personality. It's not different from me, per se, but it's a little exaggerated. And that's true for anyone. I... Honestly, what we're, we've, we're talking about is honestly, I've heard of, talked about on many other podcasts that talk about Twitch. Some podcasts, they're on or on Twitch. Like, um, and I, I'm kind of just reverb, like regurgitating what they've said because I honestly believe it. Um, uh, another big streamer that I don't think you know of, but some people might know of, someone called Co Carnage. Um, a really big streamer, what I consider big, I guess, but um, a really great streamer. I love him. He's a part of his own, he has his own community. Everything, he's awesome. But something he, he brought up, that a really good point on a podcast called Drop Frames. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it, Wolf. Drop yeah, no. Frames, no. Okay, so that's they, they have their own podcast and everything. Basically, he said when he first started and started going through his motions on Twitch, he would play a game and he would... Um, the, this is a different type of uh, light and community and, like, entertainment than what you see. Basically, what he said was, like, um, he would be playing a game, and he would be going through it, and he'd be like, oh, oh, that's that's horrible, blah, blah, blah. He would be too focused into what the game is, and, like, he wouldn't give a reaction. What he said was, like, give a, give a little oomph to whatever you think. Like, give your reaction but give it something on top of it so that people actually notice your reaction. Because if something disgusting happens a game in a game, don't just go, ew. Go like, oh, that's disgusting. Like, give something. Right. That's what I was, like, I was saying, like, yeah. exaggerate a little. That's basically what I was saying is 
don't. I wouldn't change. call it exaggerate. I wouldn't call it exaggerate. I would call it Oomph. accentuate. Maybe okay, accent- I don't even know okay, the yeah, I guess like you you want to. Exa- I when I think of exaggerate, I think of something happens. You're like, oh fuck, that's horrible, and like that's exaggerating. I think. Okay. Yeah, I see where you could. Yeah, because like yeah. Okay. So basically, the you need to have your own reaction, but just vocalize it a little more because yeah i've seen it where people were like oh shit demonstrate your reaction don't expect others to be able to tell your reaction has happened that's a good point i still say like have an idea of what you would want to see and then it's still within like your personal boundaries like don't be like oh my god and like start flipping shit but you know that's exaggerating that's what i'm saying like don't exaggerate that's okay just the definition of the word exaggerate is just meaning to overreact so if i say exaggerate a little it's just being like well fuck i know we're both looking up exaggerate exaggerate represents something that is being larger greater or better or worse than it really is yeah so to over- i guess you could call it exaggerating but it's it also but in, stands in, for in, enlarged or altered beyond normal or do yeah so keep it normal like just put okay. on. <laughs> English, it's so confusing. It um, is, but... but yeah, so I, personally, like everyone has their own way of and style of how they do Twitch. Like I just think I like to make my Twitch stream the way I would want to see a Twitch stream. So in my eyes, my Twitch streams are so good that I would personally watch them and never miss one. Because it's just the way it, the way I like to react to things, and I react to things the way I want to see them. Like, when they go down, I want to see someone cuss and get angry, but then kind of like laugh at themselves. I like seeing people put themselves down, but at the same time bring themselves up. Like kind of like, fuck, I suck, but it's okay. You know, that kind of that kind of shit. It's it's funny to me. So that's what I do in stream. Like, we know me off stream and me on stream are way different even me on video is a little different because when there's a camera in my face i react different it's just habit so but there's also that thing where people come act completely different there are those yeah yeah i mean that's when they're really exaggerating their personality that might not even i will there is exaggerating for sure but at that point i would call it acting yeah, acting, exaggerating, acting. Because they're, they're just not themselves. And what's okay? I'm trying to think of an example we can think of. Like, okay, this chairs. You way wouldn't too know freaky. an example on. No, you wouldn't know I, actually, an example unless you actually. Un- I think. No, because I met him in real life, and he's okay. a dick. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Like he's a great YouTuber, but in real life. He's I, a I don't dick. watch him, so I don't. Know. He's a dick. Like, like not really, but he, you just get that feel for it. Like so, like, yeah, sure. Like when you sign, it's like yeah, I don't like he, like he's so full of himself sometimes. But then on, on on his videos, he's completely cool. So I don't know. I could be completely wrong. Some people, sometimes uh, fame. I, I'll call it fame. Um, I'll call it internet fame. Some people get internet fame or any type of like being like, oh, you're a model of what this should be. You are one of the greats. It goes to their head sometimes. And I can say for sure. I've met those people. And I've also met the people who are these great streamers, but I didn't even notice. Because when I was talking to them at TwitchCon, I had no idea that they had, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. I thought they were just a normal person like me. And then they go up with their little partner badge into the VIP lounge, and I'm like, well, fuck, that's what. I'm out of here. I'm going to smoke. (laughs) But that's a great thing, because then you, like, people... Real recognizes real. Yeah. yeah no, and exactly. And, and it was just like. And exactly what you said. You're just like, I just thought there were someone regular like me. Well, that's the thing. They are a regular person just like you. They just have a big following. And whether or not that affects them in the sense of I'm the shit or not, that's different. Like, then I would, like, if someone came up to me and be like, like, if, I, uh, what was it? If someone, like, looked at me and said, like, oh, so I guess you want my autograph? I'm just like, no, I don't even know who you are. And he's like, you're just a dick. That's what you are. I'm, I don't feel like people should expect <laughs> that. 
But then it's just a weird scenario of, I guess it depends on how big you are. Because I've, I've, because I, I, I've watched a ton of stuff like where it's like some big people get to the point where they're just like, this guy's looking at me funny. He might just be shy. Maybe I should just ask him, hey, do you want an autograph? And it might, it might come out as being a dick. And they, they're really just trying to help someone. Maybe it's someone of their fan. Like, I've heard of scenarios where someone goes up to be like, hey, do you want an autograph? Or like, do you want me to like take a photo or something? And they're like, no, I don't even know you. And they thought they were just a fan who was just shy. Because that can also be the case. Like, that's, there are so that's many- That's hilarious. Oh my God, yeah, that it, must it, be so it, awkward. It, it is. And I think that like a lot of people have dealt with that when they've reached a level where they're just like, especially if you're going to a convention based around something you do because then like because like if you're a youtuber or a twitch streamer you don't get recognized that often out in public it'll happen here and again but yeah. like if you go to a convention you're way more than likely like to be stopped every 10 minutes if you're something of a name like i like if you think about like tom syndicate or like i don't know pewdiepie if they go to a convention i'm pretty sure they'd be stopped by a general public all the time like every foot they take someone would be like hey if i can have a picture hey can i have this i'm pretty sure that would happen and it i it's gotten to the like i guess you're too big at that point where it's like oh i don't have to worry about thinking this person's shy or anything because everyone would want it yeah but if you're like big enough to where people should like they should know who i not should but like they know who i am but they don't if there's sh- it, it gets really weird and i, I can see that because like I'm trying to think. So, the, like, the content creators I met, let, I'm going to compare two conventions right here. When I went to VidCon, the content creators I met, you could tell pretty much to a T, or sorry, to a, like a number exactly how many followers they had. Just by the way they acted, who they were with, how many fucking 12 year olds were flocking them. At TwitchCon, it was the exact opposite. You could not tell who was who unless you looked at their badge. Or well, unless they're at the you know end of a signing booth, but it was just kind of amazing. And what my point is here, which brings me, it's like YouTube and like the video community is evolved to a point where it's almost like almost not like don't don't quote me on this, but if you take a famous YouTuber, Viner, whatever, they're gonna act more like a famous actor than you take a. Tw- famous twitch streamer because a famous twitch streamer i've met so many of them i can't even count because i never knew they were famous but i just looked at their badge and they were partnered and then i looked them up later and i'm like holy crap i was talking to this person so yeah. but like it was such a difference to me now it could be just the fact that twitch it was the first TwitchCon that was like the what the fifth or sixth vidcon but you could tell well, I, I think. think I think it's generally mainly because well, VidCon I would say is the YouTube event. I would call it that. Yeah. Cuz YouTube doesn't really have an event. It's not like TwitchCon which that's the Twitch event. YouTube's event I would say is either VidCon or maybe Playlist Live. It, um, it's kind of both. And well, Yeah, but wait, uh, I was the thing going to say I was going to say one more thing before I end there. Yeah. The way I could tell was just the way like I said, they act like they acted like actors, and I think what it is is that now this is like a hypothesis again. I don't know, is that people on YouTube make a video and don't really interact with their fans that much. All they see is really just numbers. Now maybe, maybe this is it. Now of course it doesn't apply for everyone. It never applies for everyone. But so they they make a video, they interact with their fans via social media it's really kind of like a post and go kind of thing they post their comment reply they post their comment they read the comment blah 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 they see the numbers they see the offers you know all that goes in on twitch on the other hand it's more of like an instant interaction and they're not as big as some youtubers generally are because twitch is just that much smaller or yeah. at least used to be. Now it's, kind of, it's getting a lot bigger. But that's what I think it is. It's like Twitch famous is a lot more different from YouTube video famous. Well, I think that's YouTube's been around almost double of what YouTube's been around, I think. YouTube's been around um, almost double what YouTube's been around? Really? No, YouTube has been <laughs> around almost double than Twitch. 
Because right. I think Twitch has been around for, I think, five years, maybe. Something around there. Maybe four. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I don't remember. But YouTube's been around since, like, I think 2006, 7? I think 6. So it's been... Yeah. Actually, it's almost been 10 years, maybe. I don't know. But th th think about that. Like, it's almost double. And, like, the, the, the demographic has changed to... Demographic of creators on YouTube, I would say. Because... YouTube, before people started, and there was no money involved. It was just, you did this because it was a hobby. You did this because, hey, that's pretty cool. I'm going right. to try it. And you did it. And I think a lot of those people stayed the way they are through their success. Some of them have changed. Some of them did change. Some of them, like, have had to have changed. Like, I guarantee that some have gone through it and be like, well, now I'm the shit. But I think now someone who becomes a successful YouTuber nowadays, or like even like two oh years ago, who becomes successful. Oh, way. Yeah, the, that was random. <laughs> in, the middle, in the middle of the sentence. <laughs> what? Okay. Are you doing the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was good though. That was, this is perfect. It's a blooper reel. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, I love it. I love it. The <laughs> random shit that just goes on in this place, it's great. Yeah. Uh, I think nowadays a lot of people who go up are going up thinking, if I make it, then I'm the shit. Which is not how it should be. Right. Like, they right. grow, and then since now it is a thing, they become like, well, now I am a shit. Like, something and I, I feel like, you know, not all Twitch streams are like that. And I, I don't know, maybe it's... I don't think any Twitch streams like that. I don't I don't I've think I've heard of any... Yeah, I, I've never I've met... I've never seen, a... met any Twitch streamer who's, like, I'm the shit or anything. I feel like many Twitch streamers are very humble and are very, like, I'm glad I can do this for a job. I'm glad that I can do this. And I think Twitch put out a demographic at TwitchCon, which surprised the hell out of me. Which was, like... Last year, there were 600 partnered um, streamers who are, I think, are doing it for a... Or 6,000 streamers who are doing that as a career, or who are partnered. And then it doubled to 12,000 in one year. So, for in three years, they had 6,000, and in one year, they doubled. That's and, saying something. Yes. That's also another thing that's saying is what... A lot of people have said at TwitchCon, a bunch of big Twitch streamers and a lot of people, Twitch is at no point have they reached mainstream yet. Twitch is still indie. Twitch is still non-existent to the public eye. It's not anywhere near anything like that. Yeah, exactly. So, but YouTube is. So, it's it's got like, if you saw the Twitch, if you went to TwitchCon and you saw the Hall of Fame, um, the the first streamer to get inducted into the hall Twitch Hall of Fame was um crap I'm drawing a blank. I didn't see a Hall of Fame. That's weird. It's uh Twitch. Lethal Frag. I think it's Lethal, lethal Frag. Pretty Twitch sure it's hall Lethal of Fame. Frag. Yeah, I found it. TwitchCon Hall of Fame. It's a video. Is it Lethal Frag? Yes, it's it's Lethal Frag. So basically, Lethal Frag was inducted into the Hall of Fame, and they showed his journey through Twitch because he was he's he's considered an OG, an original streamer, um, from the beginnings of Twitch. And basically, he got it, and he was well documented because he he I th he's the one who started the whole two year challenge. What's the two year um, challenge? You stream every single day for two years. Um, basically that made his community. It made him into what he did. Basically he started off um, streaming and he shaved his beard. And he was like, I'm not shaving or cutting my hair till the end of two years. And then they showed the progression and like timed events of chronological order. They showed like the Super Bowl. They showed like, um, I think they showed like a bunch of stuff. And then it got to the end and it was like, this is the end of my two years and thank you guys for being here. We've been through so much, and like the community was there for him, and I feel like 
he, it showed like how someone who's made it after two years of doing something they loved has not changed and who was like still super humble like people were crying because they saw one of their best friends their other like someone who does what they do they're someone who's like them a twitch streamer was inducted into that and like is able to do it like people were crying and like so many people were happy for it. like yeah the community behind twitch is so different than youtube or anything no and it is and i've i've always said that you never want to change your personality no matter what media you go into especially during entertainment or especially if it's entertainment and Twitch, Twitch, I feel like really shapes you into that. Like it's it's different from YouTube, it's different from any other sorts of acting, TV shows, stand-up comedy. No matter what it is, Twitch is different because it's just it has its own unique interaction with people. You're still an online celebrity. Let's just call that for now. But you still interact with your fans. You still have a connection with your mods. You have a connection with other streamers. It's just like, and through Twitch, it's just Twitch itself. And thank God for the previous streamers we've had that they formed this just general feel of Twitch to where it's like, Twitch is a family, period. Now on YouTube, they call their communities families or packs or whatnot. But on Twitch, everyone calls it a family. Now they may have specific names for it, but everyone's like, it's a Twitch family. If I walk out on the street right now wearing a Twitch shirt and I see someone else with a Twitch shirt, what's the first thing you think we're going to do? Well, we're going to get hug. together, <laughs> hug, and talk about Twitch. Like, that's, like, the way this community is formed. There's just, there's very few things I can change that because it's just, it's kind of like you're grown into it because you work so hard on it. It's hard to explain, but you, you're... Born into Twitch, you're parented by this community, by other Twitch streamers. So you've had, we all have sort of the same mentality as the beginning streamers. It's a family. We just want to have fun. That's it. Now we do have some bad apples, but who doesn't? So, uh, any last words? Not really. Not really. Well, if you guys are interested I mean... in watching Fabio or me on Twitch.tv itself, um, our Twitch links will be in the description below. Of course, our Twitter handles are on the screen. As you can see, it. go ahead and follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you guys want to see a stream, um, I'm going to go stream right after this. So, anyways, guys, that was a rant and a half. Um, boy, did we cover a lot. We might go more. No, we didn't. We went on tangents the whole time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we covered a lot of random shit. Anyways, hopefully next week we'll have um, some more people in on it. We might even talk about Twitch again. Um, when this series starts actually picking up some steam, I might start streaming it. Um, but that's a while. This is just something I'm doing on the side for fun. So just to say I did a podcast. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, we should love yourselves and love life. I'm Wolf. This is Fabio. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.